good to be here in Dallas. There's a black family reunion going on in my hotel. They having the Jones family reunion, and I just been eating all they shit. Because it's a black family reunion, they think you're a part of the family. You just, you just say, I'm James, boy. Oh, okay, come on, get this. Get, this, get some of them ribs or something out of there. Get some of them greens. This James, boy. This James, boy. That's them. Look just like him. Man, how you doing? I'm like, he all right. Everything going good. I don't never see white people have. Do white people, do y'all have family reunions? I've never seen the Tzitzki family reunion. Y'all don't come out in t-shirts and shit. We're the Tzitzkis. <laughs> like, I've never, I've never seen that, man. This is all right. Good to be here in Dallas, man. So fucking hot. It's so goddamn hot, and I couldn't even get a rental car. All the cars were gone. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just stuck in the room, and I tried to do my little walk. You know, you try to walk and exercise, man. I opened that door, stepped out of my hotel. The devil shook my fucking hand. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to Dallas. It's fucking hot as fuck, man. Been doing a lot lately, man. I got a buddy of mine, he on Ozempic. One of my friends on Ozempic, man. He <laughs> lost a lot of weight. He went from like 350 to 175. Yeah, man. But we ended up going swimming. We went to a resort, went swimming. And all that skin. <laughs> that skin ain't go nowhere. The skin still there. And he. And he ended up diving in the pool, and when he jumped in, all that shit opened up like an umbrella. And he, I ain't never seen no nigga. It took that nigga three minutes to get into the water. He just, he just came down over the water like a leaf, and he floated. I'm like, man, you gotta get that skin cut off, man, because he said. <laughs> I gotta be careful with that old zipping. That shit don't make your head small. Some of y'all got them tall ass heads. You can get slim, but your head fat than a motherfucker. You better go see Beetlejuice and let him sprinkle some dust on your shit to shrink your fucking head. Huh? The fucking old zipping. I don't know. We just wrapped up Juneteenth. We just wrapped up June. We free! We free, y'all! We free. Juneteenth. Federal holiday. I don't think white people should get off, though. I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all. Y'all should have volunteered or something, goddammit, just out of respect. It's interesting. Juneteenth, that was the end of it. That was, that's something, that's amazing. Juneteenth, it was, that was it. I said, it's over. I wonder, I wonder what was happening when that, I wonder if a brother was getting whooped or something, and then... You know, they out there, whoop, whoop, they got like, Jimbo, they're free now. And the brother looked back, I'm about to kill you, cracker. We free. That's some shit, Juneteenth. That must have been awkward, too, when they got the news. Hey, guys. Uh... <laughs> You're all free now. <laughs> What the fuck? You can all go. I want to apologize for. I want to apologize for everything, but uh, I just can't read or write. I'm, I'm sorry. I just. It was that one brother. He didn't want to leave. No, I was not leaving you, massa. That was Clarence Thomas, great great granddad. <laughs> I was to stay here with you. I was not going nowhere for. Goddamn Juneteenth. Some people probably got the news late. Probably brothers still in slavery didn't even know the shit was over. And they saw another slave. Well, a brother came, so brothers still like, y'all still doing this shit? <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> Nigga, we free now. We free. <laughs> he just threw the cotton down and walked the fuck off. It's Father's Day. Father's Day. We just got through Father's Day. I was 
and on my Instagram. A lot of y'all got some ugly ass daddies. I'm gonna tell y'all that. I'm scrolling on Instagram. Everybody put their ugly ass daddy on Instagram. Everybody daddy on that motherfucker. Y'all had the worst pictures of y'all fathers on that shit. He had one eye and shit open. He fucked up. And a lot of pretty women got ugly daddies. I think, you know, I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I think if I would have had a daughter, I don't have one. I, I guess she'd have been nice looking, and I even saw the handsome women, they posted their daddies. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look just like their daddies. Look like their daddy without a mustache. You see, they got them strong features. Look just like James. Look at that. Look at that girl looking just like James. That's, Father's Day. We get one day, fellas. That's all we get. One goddamn day. We provide, we protect 365 days out of the year, and we can just get our one little funky ass dinner. We get our little dinner and whatever. And you know what? My wife bought me some fucking balloons. I said, babe, listen, I this, this is some shit you want for for Mother's Day. I don't want no fucking balloons. If I, if I want balloons, you need to be scared because I'm gay. If you, if you buy my ass balloons, I'm like, oh my God, these are great. Fuck. You just can't even be no grown man with balloons. You ever got to go to Party City to get some balloons for your wife? You walking out with all them fucking balloons and hearts. You just, you know, you can't get no altercation with all them balloons. Oh, beat your ass. Don't play with me, motherfucker. <laughs> Little heart and numbers just floating in the air. You get no goddamn balloons. Never get me no balloons. She took me to dinner, her and my son. They took, we had a little, not dinner, but a little brunch. And I saw another guy. He was having brunch by himself. And I said, hey, your father? He said, yeah. I said, man, wait, your family didn't come? Said, nope, they give me my piece on Father's Day. I said, damn, that's what I need to do. <laughs> Eat my fucking piece. I should have let that been my free day where, you know what I mean? I could just be alone and by myself, shit. Women, y'all fuck with us. I, why, women, why do y'all do that? Why do y'all like to see us get comfortable and then you want to ask us to go do some, some errand or something? <laughs> they wait for us, fellas. Like, you know, you get on the couch, you, you chilling, you, you got your favorite show on, your hands in your pants, <laughs> your balls done drop down to your ankles. You're in peace. You're not bothering nobody. The AC's blowing cool. Your favorite show is on. And they look, they lurk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Babe. Fuck! Would you, would you go to the store for me? I just want you to get something for me. Why are you gonna wait for me to get comfortable and shit to go get juice? I don't feel like that shit. Then they send your ass to the store. You better get it right. They send us to the store now. How many of y'all be in the store scared as hell? You got the list. You got pictures. You asking people questions. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I need, I need this, I need this right here. I gotta get. I, I can't bring nothing. I have to get this. They try to sell you something else. They're like, no, 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 I can't. I can't. I need this exact thing. <laughs> you walking around the store for three hours looking for that shit until you find it. Then you get all the shit. You get everything. You get everything they want. You get every item. It's perfect. As soon as you walk it out, did you get my last text? <laughs> Bitch! What the fuck? Why you didn't text me while I was there? I didn't see that shit. That's what I'm saying, you don't pay attention. (laughs) 
The worst, the worst thing in the world is the mail. Uh, what, what are them, what are them people that deliver your groceries when they get the man, the shop guy? What do they call them guys? The people that that you can hit the button and they bring your groceries. The Instacart, the me and Instacart, they always get that shit wrong. I'm just glad I'm not in the middle of that. My wife be mad as shit. Can you believe I ordered oranges? This motherfucker bought me one orange. Who the fuck wants one orange? That's why I hate when men go do this shit. <laughs> oh, these are some great times we live in. Being 20, 20, 24 is a great time to be a parent. You know, you don't have to go shopping. Nobody go to the mall. Nobody goes to the store. You know that's that shit? The mall is, is weird now. Ain't the mall weird? It's like nobody goes to the fucking mall. You go to the mall, you go in the store and look empty, and then that weird guy appears. <laughs> like, get the fuck away from me, weirdo. Now, you know when the mall's on death's door. You go to the malls when every store, jewelry store, they got two foot lockers. That shit is over with. <laughs> Everywhere you go, a jewelry store, it's just bad. It's terrible. Huh? And I like to go in there. I just go to random malls just to fuck with the jewelry man. I like to get the price down and then just walk away. <laughs> I really like to haggle them down on some pieces of bullshit jewelry and leave. And I always do it every time. Hello, friend. You like chain? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like chain. How much for that? They never give you the price. They always weigh the shit and put it in, and type something on the calculator. <laughs> and they do it while they looking at you. Yeah. Well, how much? How much the chain for you? <laughs> for you, friend. <laughs> for you, I give, I give, I give fifteen hundred. I say, no, no, I can't do 15, okay, okay, I did, but, but give me one second. <laughs> okay, friend, friend, come here, come, friend. <laughs> Never seen him in my life, I'm his best friend. Friend, friend, come here, come, 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 friend, friend. For you, I do 750. <laughs> no tax, outdoor, 750. <laughs> no, I can't, 750, that's... That's too much, man. Friend, give me one sec. One. Friend, ten dollars. I lose. I lose. Friend, ten dollars. I give to you ten dollars. <laughs> and that's when I look at it like, nah, I'd have got it. I just don't like that little thing you got right there. But, but you take care. I'm good on that. Nobody go to the mall no more. This shit's a dying. They're dying because of Timu. I love Timu. How many of y'all love Timu? Timu, I'm addicted to Timu. I love Timu. You win every time. Every time I open that app, I get 90% off. The shit goes from $1,000 to $2. I'm like, oh, God, I won again. And, and wheels spin. I just can't help it. I have to order this shit. And you're just ordering a bunch of nothing. I'm turning into a hoarder because I can't stop. I'm addicted to this fucking app. And then it shows up to your house like a brick of cocaine and it's wrapped up like the heroin or some illegal substance. And you gotta get a saw to cut that shit open and, and get it out. I love Timo. And I know I talked about slavery earlier and we had it the worst black people, but we don't seem to care about that uh, child Chinese labor. We want that shit. A lot of brothers be talking about slavery. You standing out there with all that sheen and fashion over shit, <laughs> typing on the iPhone, but you don't seem to care about them little Chinese babies. <laughs> and I saw a video of the Timu factory, just children in there, shirtless, just boxes of shit raining on their heads. It was sad. And I looked at it, and I thought to myself, you know, if I don't order this one less box, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> And I ordered more from Timu, and I saw more boxes rain down on their heads. Chinese child labor. We want that shit. These phones, we need it. 
It's Fashion Nova, Sheen. It's cheap. It's cheap labor. We get what we want. It's a great time to be a parent, too. We don't even have to go. You don't even have to go shopping for Christmas 2024. Just think about the, our parents in the 80s. They ain't fucking Toys R Us fighting for a Nintendo for our ass. <laughs> <laughs> they had the Black Friday sale. Your daddy and them fighting, fighting to get you the Nintendo so your ass could play Duck Hunt. <laughs> now your ass just hit a button. We just hit a button. It just shows up to the house. This shit just shows up. And the Amazon people, you don't never see them. This shit just be there. They like little ninjas. <laughs> you don't see it or nothing. Every once in a while, you get a weird one, though, that'll just ring the bell and stand there. Bing bong! Could you get from in front of my door, creep? <laughs> I don't need you out there. I'll get the box later. Just leave, please. I don't... I was pulling for y'all to win the, uh, the NBA championship. I really was. I, I was. I swear, man. I Listen... I was in the movie Uncle Drew, so I got to work with Kyrie. I was in Uncle Drew. I don't know if y'all was saying it. I had a small part, but I did some writing on it. I was the Foot Locker manager. But anyway, I was pulling for Kyrie and Luca. I, uh, they just didn't have a help. They didn't have no help. Kyrie and Luca producing 60% of the team's points. The rest of the guys, they're just standing the fuck around. It remind me how the Mexicans be. It just only be two Mexicans working, the rest watching. <laughs> you, you see six of them is two digging the ditch, the rest just looking down on them. I like that Luka Doncic. He get he get the job done. His game ain't pretty, but that shit go in. He throw it in. I like his post game interviews. Luka, what did you feel about the ga today's game? Well, I put, I come, I put the ball in hole. I do job. I come to put the ball in hole after I leave here. I drive Uber. I own jewelry store in mall. I am here to work, to put the ball in hole. I am Slovenian man. <laughs> Them foreigners taking over the NBA, brothers. We about to be out of jobs. We about to be out of jobs. They all taking over the fucking Victor Wimbignana. This nigga like 10 foot 12. <laughs> he looked like one of them inflatables that be in front of the car lot. <laughs> what do you do with that? This one nigga's a freak. <laughs> I watched him. He don't even need to jump to dunk. I, I watched him dunk the ball, and then he just jumped. I'm like, why your tall ass? <laughs> just dunk the fucking ball, man. You don't need to. Need to do all that. Oh man, so much going on. We lost OJ. Oh man, the moment of silence for OJ. I'm I'm gonna miss. No, no, don't don't do that. Don't do this. Don't don't do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss going on Twitter and say he seemed like a nice man. I'm gonna miss opening up Twitter. Good morning, Twitter world. <laughs> he was a nice man. He just didn't like them two people. That was all. <laughs> he loved everybody. He was kind and caring. It was just those two people that he killed. He didn't like them. When you think about it, during that time, there was no social media. He couldn't, he couldn't block them. That's you know how we can block people now. You know, there was no way for OJ to block them, so he just went over there and hacked them up. But, but he was kind. OJ got out of here, man. He left. And on his deathbed, he had everybody sign NDAs. His family, his family came around. They made all of them sign NDA contracts and shit. And, you know, I wish I could have been there. I'd have loved to see that. You know, I'm sure he, I'm sure that shit looked like this. All right, y'all, I'm about to go. But I want to tell y'all something. What? I did it. Psych, bye-bye. <laughs> he just laid 
he laid back in the in the in the casket. Just that shit. That shit must have been awkward when Nicole and Ron saw that nigga at the gates of heaven. I know that shit was awkward. He walks slow as shit. He's, hey, y'all. <laughs> Is that fucking OJ? What the fuck did he make it up here? That nigga's knees was blown out and everything. I'm sure he talked to Jesus, too. Hey, hey Jesus. You think, uh... I could get in and, and Jesus looked at him and said, I forgive you. And that's when Nicole and Ron got mad. That motherfucker! And, and then they got sent to hell. No, <laughs> this is fucked up. This is going off the rails. I'm, I'm sorry. This is, this is fucked up. This, this shit is getting too dark. <clears throat> Oh, boy, it's good to be here, though, I swear. So I've been doing comedy now for about four years full-time. I end up leaving my former profession as a uh, retail pharmacist. For those of you who don't know... What, what's so funny about that? I, this is the truth, shit. What the fuck is y'all laughing for? Why is this a joke? I have a real doctorate degree. Not an honorary, but a real one. And I'm tired of them giving these celebrities these fucking honorary degrees. Who was that last celebrity they gave an honorary doctorate to? That shit, a Fat Joe. What the fuck, Fat Joe? <laughs> Nigga, you know how many tests I had to take and you get this fat fuck an honorary doctorate? You know the hoops and shit I had to jump through to get my damn doctorate and you give his fat ass a doctorate? for rapping about selling crack and shit. <laughs> Speaking of crack, if one more nigga call me Judge Mathis, I'm gonna slap the shit out of him. <laughs> Are you a crackhead? Just call me no fucking Judge Mathis. <laughs> I've been doing comedy four years. It's going on four years full time, you know, as a comedian, but I work doctorate degree in pharmacy, went to pharmacy school, learned, studied a lot of hard sciences, medicinal chemistry, biochemistry, pharmacokinetics. <sighs> but, but every morning I would find myself working behind a cash register at CVS, ringing up, <laughs> ringing up dog food and cereal. And, Cookies and shit and juice and just, just fucking people getting on my fucking nerves. I learned to hate people. I learned to hate y'all ass. Y'all people just made me fucking sick working back there. It's just like, you know, because when you work retail, people think you they slave or some shit. And and CBS at this point, it's a fine line between working there and and the Dollar Tree at this point. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's that much fucking difference. I mean, you know, because the Dollar Tree, that's a depressing place. You go in there, the lights always dim, the people are hateful in there, everybody work their nails dirty and shit. There's, there's shit everywhere, ain't nothing on the shelf, all the shit in the middle of the aisle. Nobody want to be in there. CBS the same way, except we're giving you guys medicine. People come to you at your back. Why it take so long to, to, to give me the pills? This motherfucker, I'm alone. <laughs> look at that fucking drive through. That shit look like Chick fil A, nigga. That's why. I don't have 30 people in the drive through, just me and this technician. Shit. People get on my damn nerves coming in there. Every time I come here, I always have a problem. What well, did you ever think about not coming back? Shit. <laughs> have to solve this shit. <laughs> I am tired. I'm tired. 
get that one, one guy. This will be the last time I spend I spend money here. Like I'm supposed to get on the intercom and go, Attention, all CVS shoppers and employees. Uh, since Mr. Smith will no longer be spending his $7 a month in the store, he has now bankrupted our company. I need all employees to punch out effective immediately. This will be our last day in business because we can't get Mr. Smith's money. Thank you all for shopping at CVS. Now he mad when we go out of business and he see me working at Walgreens. Hey, Mr. Smith, you gonna put us out too? <laughs> CBS is a monopoly. It's a monopoly. So, you know, come in there, you look on your little benefit card to say Caremark. Yeah. Not only do they own Caremark, they own your health insurance, Aetna. So there was a point when I saw that card, <laughs> I used to treat y'all like shit. <laughs> Because at that point, we're married. You ain't going nowhere. I ain't coming here no more. Yes, the fuck you are. <laughs> they own your benefits, bitch. You're coming back. <laughs> it might not be this store, but you got to go to the one across the street. <laughs> Welcome to corporate greed. Shit. It was ridiculous. I used to work with people on Medicaid and shit. They need to cut that shit off once a month just to make them thankful. <laughs> yeah, because they just get, they don't have gratitude. This is bad attitudes and shit. Just, I bring one lady up, she had seven medications. This shit was a dollar, one dollar. I say, man, all seven meds would be a dollar. <gasps> a dollar? Sir, I don't have a dollar. Well, bitch, you about to die today. Because <laughs> if you ain't got four quarters and 10 dimes, you don't deserve to be on the earth. And get that fucking Louis Vuitton bag and get the fuck out of here. See, your health priorities are fucked up, and I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> Just dealing with people and their damn problems, man. It used to make me sick, man. They used to get on my fucking nerves. Then they had us giving flu shots. Flu shots. Just one day they came to the pharmacy. Said, hey, guess what, guys? I'm like, what? We're gonna be giving flu shots. I'm like, we didn't do that shit in school. <laughs> We're gonna do it anyway. And every bitch ass farms all over the nation, we just start doing them. We didn't question it, we just start doing it. He could have came in here and said, hey, guess what, guys? What? We're gonna be delivering babies. We're not fucking going to cause it. We're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> and they've been all kind of hoes just dropping babies in the back of CVS and farms. Just standing there with gloves, popping out the fucking kids. <laughs> Used to have to get them damn flu shots, and I, when I when I would give a flu shot, get, hand me that napkin, brother. Would you hand me that? I gotta give you an example here. So, when you get those flu shots, we would often use an alcohol swab that was white, very white. Now that's alcohol swab. I would have to open that up to disinfect your shoulder before injecting you with the syringe. And it was white when I opened it. <laughs> now, if I go to wipe your shoulder and I pull that swab back and it look like I've been changing transmission fluid, <laughs> God damn it! At that point, you don't need a shot. You need a bath. You obviously have all the antibodies. You got a soot, dirt, grime, grease, caked up on your nasty ass. Get the fuck out of here, man. You disgust me. It was terrible. It was terrible. The whole thing was just terrible, dealing with fucking people. I was working one day, this guy came in here, had two teeth in his mouth, had the nerve to ask me where the teeth whitening was at. I said, the man, if you don't just wipe them two goddamn teeth off and get, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> sitting, sitting there wasting my fucking time. I got time for this shit. Phone ringing off the hook. I'm dealing with these stupid ass people. It used to make me sick. Old fuckers want to come the last two minutes before close. Store closed at nine. Here this fucker come. It's 8.58.
I'm like, Biden, would you hurry the fuck up? I want to get out of here. <laughs> I put the wrong medicine in this bottle. I killed his ass. You'll never do that shit again. I used to... <laughs> I used to work, I had a old, I used to have this old white lady that would call me the same time, same day, and she would spell out her last name and give me a word for every letter in the last name. <laughs> and I felt as if she was like fucking with my intelligence because it was a simple last name and she would always spell it out for me. <laughs> Pharmacy department, how may I help you? Hi, this is Mary Flock. F is in Frank, L is in Larry, O is in Birds. I'm like, well, that's great, Miss Flock, but I don't give a F as in Frank, U as an umbrella, C as in cat, K as a kite. Bitch, you call here again, I'll put the wrong medication in your bottle and fuck you up, because I think you fucking with my goddamn intelligence right now. And I don't have time for this shit, because I got cookies and juice and shit to ring up. Just too much, man. Too much. I used to work all over, all over Georgia, all over. I live in Atlanta. They would send me everywhere. I young black pharmacists. They want me to work in the hood all the time. I said, I don't want to work around them niggas either. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I care for my safety. You work in the hood, you the physician of the neighbor. You the physician. You are the neighborhood physician. People always wanting to show me some shit. Yeah, hey, bro. Hey, you the pharmacist, man? Man, you ain't gonna believe this shit. Man, I been bleeding like a motherfucker. Look at this shit. <laughs> like, man, they don't take your ass to the doctor, nigga. I ain't nothing I can do back here. What you want me to do? Lay you across the cash register and stitch you up? I don't have time for this shit. Go to the damn doctor. Go to the doctor, fellas. Old men, go to the doctor. You know, we don't want to go to the doctor. The older we get, we don't want to go to the doctor. We got to go, though. We got to go. The only time we go to the doctor, especially as elderly black men, you know, we get older, only time we even think about going when we hear one of our friends done died of a heart attack or something. <laughs> when another one of our friends died, hey man, you, you, did, did you hear about Charles? <laughs> what happened to Charles? Had a heart attack, just dropped dead. <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna have to make me an appointment to the doctor. <laughs> And he don't never make the appointment himself. He got to get his wife to do that shit. <laughs> old men can build shit, build a house, drive a motor in the car, but who come to make the appointment to the doctor? Shit. <laughs> Baby, you made me an appointment to the doctor? God damn, Earl. Because <laughs> <laughs> he don't know where none of his papers are. He, she, got to go, she got all his papers under a mattress. So she got to lift up, get all his health insurance and shit out of there. Go to the damn doctor. You got to go to the doctor, man. Dealing in that place. I'm glad I'm out, though. That's how bad it was. I left that shit to come talk to strangers on stage. <laughs> All that schooling to be a clown. <laughs> this, sh this shit is weird. <laughs> People to call. I had this Nigerian guy call me one time, cussed me out on the phone. I just got mad because I couldn't understand his last name. And I just asked him to repeat the name. And he just got loud and mad. But I could, I could understand every cuss word his ass was saying crystal clear. Phone. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't understand it. Could you repeat that? How are you to give me this shit you are giving to me? Who is your superior? I do not have to take this shit from you. I am tired of your shit. 
I say, let me tell you something. You might have been a mighty king in Africa, but you a cab driver in America, motherfucker. I ain't gonna take this shit off your black ass, and I gotta sit back here and go through this shit. I used to love when, when Mexicans would come to the pharmacy. I had to deal with them, because I, I don't speak Spanish. A lot of times they don't speak English, but they would want to play a game of charades. <laughs> <laughs> At the register, they would always come. I could tell they could speak English. They'd give me that look when they come in. Hey. Hey. Hey, Spiny. No, no Spanish. Hey. The baby, the sick. Hey, sick of the baby. Okay. And after going back and forth with his ass for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, I'm going back and forth with his ass. He finally decides to come up with this bright idea. I, I, I see him go to a huddle. It's a huddle of Mexicans <laughs> standing in front. They, they all talk. And the, and the huddle opens up and a, and a small child emerges. The small child emerges like Jesus. trying to say is my little brother suffering from a cough and what are all your cookies and juice get the fuck out of my face before I fuck you and your daddy up and ladies if you got more than one baby daddy give all them kids one last name that saved me time for having to run to 17 different baskets picking all that shit I'm picking up for Tequavius Johnson, Walter Gillespie, Taquania Smith, and Julio Alvarez. You got a Mexican baby too, bitch? Hey, the baby the sick. <laughs> Save me some fucking time. <laughs> It got bad too, man. We had to get them COVID. You know, we was giving them COVID shots. That shit got bad. Uh, I noticed on Instagram during that whole COVID thing, I, I saw, I saw that Magic Johnson had put a video of himself getting a COVID shot. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again over here. I saw a video on Instagram of Magic Johnson getting his COVID shot. Let me say it again one more time. Magic Johnson was on Instagram and he showed he's getting his COVID shot. And I'll be honest with you, if Magic Johnson would have came to CBS and I was working at to get a COVID shot, I would look Magic dead in his eyes and said, nigga, you good. You don't need this goddamn shit. You done had AIDS for 30 years, Magic. This shit ain't about to kill your ass. You got the immune system of an X-Man. You got the... Shit, you got the most successful case of AIDS I ever seen in my life, Magic. You matter of fact, your blood might be the cure, Magic. Now get out of line so I can give Flavor Flav his shot, because that nigga clearly was born with COVID. Look at his face, his eyes. This nigga is COVID. I did get vaccinated. I got it. I got the vaccine. I don't know now. I'm kind of scared. I don't know. All these new reports are coming out. I don't know if I'm going to grow a lizard tail in five years. I don't know. Could, could it have been that a lot of our conspiracy theorist cousins were right? We were dissing their ass. I told my cousin about this shit. He, he put, nigga, you about to die. Can't believe you let them white folks put that shit in your, your body, nigga. Like, my little ghetto cousin had all the answers. I mean, I was like, nigga, I didn't know you was a molecular virologist. <laughs> About to die, let them white people put that shit in you, man. <laughs> them motherfuckers trying to take your DNA, man. I say, what? Hell yeah, they trying to take your DNA. I said, they're trying to take my DNA. Hell yeah. Then I looked at him. And I looked him deep in his soul. And I said, nigga, why would they want to take your DNA <laughs> to make more of you to fail in society? Why?
And I told him, I said, shit, I get a shot. So they don't come in a black people box and a white people box. Come in one box. Everybody get the same shot. I don't see a black person. See me a good, good, cool shot. Oh, yeah, nigga. <laughs> uh, we got another one. <laughs> Had to take this nigga's DNA. <laughs> But who knows? Who knows, man? What's going to happen in five years with the side effects? I, I don't know. But I do know during the whole discussion of getting the shot versus not giving the shot, I don't know. Am I going to die from this shit? Who knows? But based on most of the people that I was arguing with, I would rather die than be here with <laughs> You know, if I rolled the dice wrong, I don't want to be on this earth with the, with that half of the population. Just take me. So, if I get a fucking lizard tail, it's what it is. That shit's gonna be fucked up. Then I gotta talk to my cousin again. Yeah, I come to the cookout with my lizard tail dragon. I told you, man! You thought you knew it all. Look at that goddamn tail growing out your ass, boy. That goddamn, you got a whole fucking lizard tail, nigga, coming out of you. You sick, you dying. And all I can say, yeah, fuck it, man. That's what it is. The only sad part about the lizard tail is if you turned on by a woman, the tail the tail will start to to raise up. <laughs> the tail to raise up at the wrong times. You at church, hey, Sister Jones. How you been? That was a good sermon, right? <laughs> yes, it was. Praise God. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. That was a great, great sermon, Sister Jones. Yeah, you end up getting the COVID shot. That's all that is. You take care. <laughs> <laughs> they got a hard tail. <laughs> and after a while, women will be like, girl, did you see his tail? That motherfucker was thick and juicy. <laughs> a thick ass tail. <laughs> then you see your cousin again, shit, hey man, what? You know why I get one of them shots? <laughs> I'm trying to get me one of them tails, boy. <laughs> Oh, boy, what a great crowd. The little crowd that could. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate y'all coming, I swear. Oh, boy. I was talking to my father before I came out here. My dad older. 75, 75. Take him 20 minutes to pick up a cell phone. You ever call an older person, they struggle to pick up the phone? You hear all kind of shit going off in the background? B before they say hello, phone ring, this is all you hear. Hello. Hey, yeah, I'm all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, we just sitting in here. Yeah, everything all right. Yep, yes, me and your mommy. Yep, everything. We we, we doing okay. Yep, uh-huh. And my dad long-winded, too. I can say hi. He keep on talking. I just I just won't get off the phone. Shit. I call my dad. He just take over the conversation. He don't let me get a word in. He just runs with the conversation. Phone. Yellow. Hey, dude, what's going on? Hey, boy, I'm all right. I got to go down there and such gear that the next week in my check. And, you know, I'm running down there. Home Depot with about two black sheetrock. You know, your cousin came here last week, took my goddamn ladder because he was supposed to help me. And I gave him $40. I ain't seen it, ain't heard from him. But your mama said, you supposed to be coming around here. And I always said, you're going to be a man, be a man. He got to be a word. But I'm so happy I get the medication that I need because, you know, Barack Obama just passed that health care bill. Well, to make a long story short, I'm going to talk to you later. Goddamn. That's why he lost his job. He used to be a 911 operator. They fired him. <laughs> I listened to the tape of the call. Guy ended up getting shot. He was in the hood and shit. My dad was working that shift. 
You tell nine one one phone ring. <laughs> 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 nine one one, that may help you. Yeah, I just got shot. Yeah, uh -huh, you down there doing something you ain't got no goddamn business doing. See, you down there thugging and gangbanging and carrying on, but I got to go down and show security out there and we get my check. Cause I'm gonna run out of Home Depot get about two flat sheet rocks cause I gave my nephew $40. He ain't bought my goddamn ladder back cause that don't make one bit of sense. And I'm just so glad Barack Obama done passed that health care. Hello? Hello? We done lost another one. Hey, that's my time, man. Thank y'all, man. I'm LeVar Walker.